Over the weekend, Blair White did a video about a trans girl who did not disclose the fact that she was trans to the person that she's in a relationship with. And coincidentally enough, the next day, there was a Facebook post in a group for blind people that I am in asking whether or not the original poster should disclose her blindness to a person she met on a dating app on their first date or before their first date. Now, I said that she should because there are some different dynamics between blind and sighted people in relationships than there would be if you were just meeting somebody who could see. And that is apparently internalized ableism. I've gone and done it again, folks. I just can't help myself. I said that there were many dynamics between blind and sighted people, especially in long-term relationships, where there are things that blind people just can't do that the sighted partner is going to have to pick up the slack for. Like, oh, in my case, driving the kids to their beaver scouts or... Um, as we just had to do over the weekend, putting in eye drops, um, or, uh, what, you know, any, anything that requires vision. Now, are there things that can be done to adapt so that blind people can, you know, give their kids medicine? Yes, absolutely. However, there are still plenty of things that need to be taken care of that the sighted person, it is just more convenient, easier to do, to do instead of the blind person. And safer, you know, I cannot drive the, ch the child to Beaver Scouts. Not going to happen. And apparently my pointing this out is internalized ableism and my saying that blind people are a burden on our sighted partners which I never said, and I never said that blind people can't do anything in a relationship with sighted people. But let me explain something here, because I was, I was told, well, there are, there are public transportation, there is Uber, there is grocery delivery services that you can use so that the sighted person doesn't have to drive to the grocery store. Okay, however, in, in where I am, the grocery services, first of all, are unreliable. You don't get everything that you put on your list. And that is a common complaint that I hear no matter where your location is, Canada or the States. I don't know how many times I've been talking to my blind friends from the States who have gotten their Instacart order and they've been going through it and going, okay, where's this? Where's this? Where is half the stuff I ordered? So then I'd have to send Pincalo to the store anyway. Okay, so that's out. Now moving on to the public transportation. Yes, you can use it, and I have used it. However, it takes an extra couple of hours to get where I'm going. The routes have all been divided between the buses and the train. So... That's, it, it, you, you need to learn those routes, which is do, doable, um, but it is, there's a whole bunch of other variables involved, and it takes a long time to learn these things. I'm not saying it's not doable, I'm saying it is more uh, convenient and conducive to having the sighted person drive the child to practice. And if, trans if public transport is not an option, they say, well, you can take an Uber. Are you guys made of money? Where, where, are all, where is all this money coming from for you guys to just jump in Ubers there and back? Where is your money tree? I really would like to know because Uber is not cheap. All right? If you have somebody who can drive, why on earth... Would you pay to put money in the family car and put money in an Uber? That makes no sense at all. 
And if you're just doing it because independence, why would you financially burden your family just so you can feel good about getting around by yourself? That's a little selfish to me. You have, there's a time and a place to be, you know, independent. Trust me, I love taking the bus. It gives me time to be by myself and listen to my music without, you know, mommy, mommy, mommy. But you know what? If there's a time constraint and things need to get done, the sighted person's going to pick up the slack for that. And you know what? That's okay. That doesn't make you a bad blind person. Doesn't make you a burden. It's just facts. Deal with it. I'm sorry. I, I The minute you throw, oh, that's internalized ableism. The minute you throw that at me, you have lost your argument. Because you can't even come up with a logical argument as to why I'm wrong. You just have to throw internalized ableism at me to shame me for what I'm saying. And you know what? It's not going to work. Because I actually have a brain in my skull. I'm sorry you don't like reality. But the reality is... Uber's expensive, buses take time, and when you have places to go and places to be and little time to get there, your sighted partner is going to have to pick up the slack for that. And using the words pick up the slack for does not imply that the blind person is a burden. Because let me tell you, the blind person is going to pick up the slack for stuff like say the sighted person needs to take a nap and the blind person is watching the kids. That's picking up the slack for the sighted person. Is the sighted person a burden for sleeping? No. So why are we a burden? Because we can't drive. Look inside yourself for your own internalized ableism before you start spewing that crap out at other people for, for making sense. <laughs>